Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church of Turbeville. It's such a, man, it's a nice crowd. We're finally getting a few folks over on this side. Uh, I don't know if you guys had noticed, but for a while, everybody was over here and there was like three or four over here. So it was awkward because every time I look over here, all I saw was Charlie. So it was like I was staring lovingly into Charlie's eyes as I'm trying to preach. So I had to make sure I focused back over here. But anyway, uh, it's such an honor and privilege to be here with you this morning. Uh, let's open up with the, to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. God, we just thank you for everything that he means to us. God, thank you for bringing us all together on a day where it's rainy. God, so many people can decide because of what's going on in our world and because of the weather to stay home, but they have decided to come here. And so, God, I just pray that you bless each and every person that's here. God, I pray that you bless each and every person that's watching at home that could not be here. And God, I just lift up all those that are sick, all those that are dealing with loved ones in the hospital, God, those that are dealing with death. I just pray that you bring each and every one of them comfort, bring them peace. God, so that it glorifies you. And God, we just call upon you now to be with us this morning in this service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. Um, we're going to start with one that will either wake you up or make you tired. One or the other is going to happen. Um, it's going to be 611 on Jordan Stormy Banks. If you will stand and sing with me, please. On Jordan Stormy Banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and come with me? I am bound for the promised land. Let's sing verse 2. what she wants to do. It's that happy place and be forever blessed. When shall I see my father's face and in his bosom rest? I am bound for the promise. It's the first time I've ever heard anyone have to tell Melba to speed up. Yes. All right. So at this time uh, we of worship is our children's time. So we're going to invite Cousin Sydney forward, and all the kids would like to come sit up around her. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, y'all already got candy. Where in the world? You'll take seconds. You know what? That's how I think, too. So... No, well, I heard somebody walking behind me. Feed five, four, four soldiers behind me. <laughs> what did you grab? You want to see what I grabbed? <gasps> it might come and get you. Oh. Oh! Oh, nice. Oh, that's our stabby. <laughs> I ain't going to stab nobody. I ain't going to stab nobody. So, what did you say this was? Screwdriver. Do you know what specific kind of screwdriver it is? Phillips head. 
So, it looks like a pretty good screwdriver, huh? Looks like it could do a job. You think it's good? I think it's good, too. Right, right, okay. So, I, you know, it's it's not like a drill where I can just... But, I mean, it's still a decent tool, right? Have y'all ever had to use one before? No. Where, where, what was an instance where you did... Taking a scrap piece of wood, what about you? Do what? Sissy took apart my moped. You had a little moped and you had to, they took it apart and you put it back together. Okay, all right. You might be working with Matthew over there soon. What about you? Oh, put batteries in your Nerf gun. Like, you have to take it out and put it, yeah, I know what you're talking about. What about you? Did you have something? You were going to say that too? Okay. Well, cool. So this is um, something you could probably see pulling out of what a special kind tool of box. toolbox. Yeah, a toolbox, and it's made for a specific purpose, right? To help. I mean, it looks like it's got some junk on it. It's been used at my house. I, I'm not even gonna ask where it's been, but um, it's it's a pretty good tool to have because can you imagine, you know, trying to get that little tiny screw out of your Nerf gun without it? With, your, with just your fingers or take trying to put your moped my goodness back together without it or just even just getting it really tight outside of a piece of wood I mean you kind of need it right well you know God can kind of use us the same way you might be just what he needs oh hi there who is this this what that with us this morning Susie. her name is Susie okay so you get to learn about this too okay so I ain't going to drop it on her head, okay? So God can kind of use us the same way. You might be just what he needs to help somebody else. You know, have you ever had to use, like, help somebody? Like maybe it was an older person help pick sticks up out of their yard or clean the house. or Maybe it's even just for listening to your friend who might be going through a hard time. Or maybe it's inviting somebody to church. You know, God can use that for his glory, kind of like we can use a tool to get a job done in a certain way, you know? So we are going to pick up, continue this next Sunday. So I'm going to bring this back if I don't lose it. If not, I'm sure I'll find another one. I hope get the same one. So we'll pick up from here next Sunday, and let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to have tools and remind us of how you can use us to help other people know you, Lord. And that's our ultimate goal is to help others know you and to glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We'll pick up from there next Sunday. And so you were wanting to see what was in here, right? Fun dip? You like fun dip? He had that look on his face. Here you go. Got the what now? I just have green. Do you want one? Okay. I just have green and blue. There you go. Don't forget Susie, my goodness. <laughs> learning how much easier boys were at this age. Um, pray for me. So uh, we have a few things that are uh, going to be picking back up or that are going on. Uh, reminder, next Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. So our Super Bowl offering will be taken up for Walker Gamble Elementary's food program. There's also no Sunday night service, no Awanas next Sunday as it's the Super Bowl. Um, Brotherhood, there's going to be a meeting here Tuesday, uh, 2nd of February. So this Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. If you are wanting to come, if you're going to be there, uh, let Austin or Charlie know. I think right now we're sitting at about 13 uh, folks, but Austin's going to be cooking. I heard it's going to be great. So uh, if, you want, if you would like to attend Brotherhood meeting this Tuesday, February 2nd at 7 p.m. The circle meeting, they're going to start back up the second Tuesday, which is the 9th. So not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, and they're going to meet at 3 p.m. So Don and I will make sure we're out of here before then. Uh, so circle meeting Tuesday the 9th at 3 p.m. We have... Uh, Camp Long Ridge, as of right now, we're going to ask uh, this kind of 
Uh, segues into our prayer, but it's also an announcement. As of right now, Camp Longridge for our, our students, for our kids, is a go. We don't know much more than that, so just pray that um, it is a go. Pray that they can safely do it, and then pray about our, our church sending our, our kids uh, to it. I know we have money budgeted for it, but I think it's still something that we should be talking to God about, uh, especially in these times. So just pray for Camp Longridge, and pray that the right decision is made uh, this year regarding camp for our kids. Um, continue to pray for uh, Benny Welch and family at the loss of Gail. Uh, Bill Brown, he's still in the hospital, from what I understand, dealing with uh, COVID. Uh, Jackie McElveen, this is a prayer and a praise. She's doing better. Um, they're looking to hopefully release her soon, but she's 82 years old fighting COVID and uh, doing a darn good job of it, and that could only be attested to God in prayer. So thank you so much for those prayers. Uh, pray for Carl Andrews. Some of you may remember him. He was the nurse, uh, male nurse that was here when Joseph came. Well, he arrived in Honduras yesterday. He's going to be teaching uh, teams that are coming into Honduras how to do the backpack, um, door-to-door medical, food, and evangelism. So instead of what we used to do is the evangelism teams would go out and they would evangelize while people came in to see the doctors and, and all that, they're, they're going out door-to-door. It's going to be more intimate. So Carl arrived there yesterday. Um, he's getting up to the Bible Institute today. So just be in prayer for Carl as well as the team um, that is out there with him. Uh, pray for my sister, uh, Tam. Uh, she's just going through some things right now. Uh, Katina Dills, a t- uh, my cousin and her family as they're dealing with uh, coronavirus. Pray for Crystal Miller as she's dealing with a health issue. Uh, Wade, we'll continue to pray for him. It's good to see you here this morning, Robin. I'm sure you needed the break and uh, some Jesus time, so thank you for being here. Um, pray for my sister-in-law, Adriana Clark. She is having some significant health issues as well, where she's probably going to end up needing surgery. Um, and in a praise is Jay Rowland was released from the hospital. He was the one that we were praying for last week. His son, Wyatt, was uh, the running back last year for um, Austin um, at Lawrence Manning Academy. And I believe his mom works at Lawrence Manning Academy too, right? Yeah. All right, so that's a praise. Are there any other prayer requests? Any things that I'm forgetting? Brenda, Miss Brenda, uh, we'll pray for her. Uh, she has her a follow-up with her heart doc tomorrow. So pray for Joel and Teresa as they're going to be going up. That's Teresa's mom as they're going to be going back up to Spartanburg, right, upstate uh, this afternoon uh, to be there for her appointment tomorrow. Alan Alan Coker? Okay. Any others? Yep, that's right. Husband's name was Chris, right? All right. Any others? All right, so this time I'd like to invite um, Charlie Strickland to come up to pray as we're going to have our deacon prayer time, part of the service. The altar is open if you feel so led. Come forward and pray. You can pray right where you're at. another opportunity to come to your house father to set this time aside that not only can we learn more about you but father that we might get in touch with you father that you might just be here and take charge of these services and and hear our concerns and our cares we've already mentioned so many people so many conditions and so many needs But, Father, we're aware that you know those needs much more than we do. So as we lift them up now, we just pray for those who are mourning. We pray for those who are suffering in hospitals or have family members who have this virus. We just pray that your spirit would be with them and would would just take charge and, and be that comfort that only you can be. Father, for our government, for our leaders, for the changes that we're going through. I pray most of all that they would look to you. 
look to you for not only guidance but leadership. And Father, not only look but be obedient to your will. Father, we're in a mess. And there's only one way out of that mess and that's with you. And Father, I pray now that you would be with all of us as we go through what we're going through, as we have to make changes. Father, for this day, for Ryan, for what is said and done in this place, I pray that it might be spirit-led and that you might take charge of the service. Father, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, that we'll be careful to give you the praise and to give you the honor and to give you the glory for all that's accomplished. Thank you again for all those things that you've already done, for those things that you're doing, and Father, most of all, for those things that you're going to do. And we ask all these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you, Charlie. So now if you will turn your hymn books to 317, and Nicole will continue. No, no. I'm going to go ahead and step. I'm a little excited. Oh. Thanks, friend. All right, we're going to start with hymn number 317. There's something about that name, and we'll sing through that twice. And then we'll turn over to 530 and sing um, two verses of I'd Rather Have Jesus. If you'll stand with me, please. And we'll start with 317.
Lord, we just thank you. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus, Lord, and, and how sweet that name is to us and that knowing him and, and the sound of his name can, can change everything, can change the mood, can change the heart, right, can change the sick, can change the world, Lord, and we are so thankful to have that hope in Jesus, Lord, and, and Lord, we just pray that as we move forward into our, our service, Lord, that you, you help us focus on you and on your son, Jesus, and what that means for us, the promise that it is for us, Lord. We also ask that you help us find a way to share that promise with the world for those around us that are sick, that are dying, Lord, that are just brokenhearted. Lord, we know that, that you and only you can heal and can change, a lasting change, Lord, that, that can mean the difference in eternity for all of us. Lord, we just thank you for the week that we've had, Lord, and we thank you for bringing us back here today on another Sunday to worship you, Lord. We just pray for the week ahead of us, Lord, that we can be the light, Lord, and that we point them to you, Lord. You give us the words to share, Lord, and, and also let us know when it's time to be quiet and let you step in and, and do what you do. Lord, we just thank you for all that you bless us with daily, Lord, and for the things that we don't have to worry about. Lord, we thank you for the people in our lives that point us to you, Lord, and we, we thank you for those that you give us to help. Lord, we just pray that you bless this service and you guide Ryan as he brings it to us. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Good morning again. There's a couple things that I <clears throat> have failed to thank people for, and I know that they wouldn't want it, but we had some uh, toilet issues in the men's bathroom. Uh, the wax seal, I would assume, is what it was. I'm no expert, as I've told you before. I lack in the man department on fixing things or knowing what is wrong with them. Normally, what's wrong with them, if I fix them, is I tried to fix it. But uh, Charlie, I mean, uh, excuse me, Alex, <laughs> see Charlie? I, I look at you so much because... Um, Alex and Rich, Richard came in and uh, replaced the toilet in the men's bathroom. Thank you so much. Uh, so none of you knew that because we found it out on a uh, Wednesday night or a Sunday night. Wednesday night, put a do uh, out of order. And when I came in Sunday morning, out of order sign was gone. There was a nice big new toilet in there. So thank you. Then, if you notice, we don't have this ugly monstrosity of a tripod and a phone in front of us. Uh, so thank you to uh, Tyler and Seth for getting the camera centered and operational. Uh, so now there's a camera up there that can see all of you. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I wish it would kind of pan out a little bit, see some of y'all doing your thing, like sleeping. But um, that's okay. Um, we don't need that. So I've got a few jokes for you. I had to get my glasses. And, you know, I felt like, uh, what was that, Mr. Rogers, when I came in that door, I wanted to go to a closet and put on a, a house coat and some slippers and talk to you today about... Uh, I don't know, whatever is going on in, in the world. But uh, this morning, um, we're going to talk about Jesus the Son. And I told you I am no uh, wordologist. I don't, I'm not good at coming up with you know, very nice themes for messages and to, to draw crowds in. But this message this morning is we're going to really get to know who Jesus is. Because a lot of times we, we think we know who Jesus is and we can even talk about it. But until we put the scriptures together, till we put the verses together, till we, we put certain things together, we really don't know who they are. And of course, if you're saved this morning, you know exactly who Jesus is. We're just going to dive a little bit deeper, uh, just a little bit, because what we're going to talk about this morning uh, can each be their own sermon, and they're so deep that uh, it, it would take a long time to explain. So just bear with me as we go through this morning, but we're going to learn about Jesus this morning. Amen. Because the important thing is to know, in order to know the Father, we must understand who the Son is. In order to know the Father, we must understand who the Son is. But before we get started, I've got a couple of jokes for you. Uh, first one, why are Adams Catholic? Because they have mass. Wow. Figured at least the teachers would get that one. Yeah, you're thinking, got it. Why didn't they play cards on the ark? 
because Noah was always standing on the deck. <laughs> Who got that one? Good job. There you go. Why did God create man before woman? Because he didn't want any advice on how to do it. Thank you, Miss Mary. <laughs> Mother Mary got it. You've read that one before. So that, that one was for the men. Now I'll come up with one for the ladies next week. Um, yeah, he didn't want to be told how, advice on how to do it. I looked at my wife when I saw that one, but I kept my mouth shut. And she's not in here, so I can get away with, with talking a little bit. But uh, So this morning, we're going to be starting in uh, John 1 and verse 1 through 5. John 1, verse 1 through 5. And this is part of the epilogue um, that, you know, or if you will, I'm in school, so I'll say it, but it's John's thesis as to what he's going to talk about in his book. And the thesis is basically the first 18 verses. Uh, like I said, it's known as the epilogue. But we're just going to concentrate on the first five. The first five really go into depth on who Jesus is. The first five, as a matter of fact, even talk about time a little bit. See, we're going we're gonna to get a little bit into that. It talks about the Trinity. You know, John is the first gospel. John is the first gospel where he uh, goes out of his way to make sure that folks know that God and Jesus are equal. That they're one and the same. That he's not a subservient God, lowercase g, which we know Jehovah's Witness, that's what they think. And it all has to do with Greek and a certain um, uh, letters being uh, missing. But the Greek, there's not a Greek scholar. I'll just tell you this. I, I read up on this. Like I said, I'm not going to get too deep because uh, it confuses me. But the Greek scholar says that the way that, the God, that God is written, that uh, little ver uh, word or emblem that's missing is not needed. It means God, capital G, one. So uh, this morning, we're going to dive into John 1, verse 1 through 5. And it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So that's John 1, 1 through 5. So what's the first things that stick out to you? The first things that stick out to you is the fact that the, the, the word, word, is capitalized. The W is capitalized. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So that's, that's pretty straightforward, right? That's pretty straightforward. So that would mean that Jesus is what? God. Jesus is God. And, and, and again, we already read, and then in verse 2 it says, He was in the beginning with God. Now, we're going to talk about Genesis 1, 1 through 3 here in a little bit. Because in Genesis 1, 1 it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But I want us to understand that when he, John is talking about in the beginning was the word, this is the time before creation. Jesus was not created. Everybody understands that, right? God was not created. The angels were created. Man was created. The earth was created. The animals were created. Jesus was not. Jesus was with God. And there are some scholars that talk about that time difference that we're, that we're seeing between what John writes, uh, the span of time, excuse me, and creation in Genesis 1-1 is when the fall, the devil decides to try and take over and he wants to be in charge of heaven. There's some discussion about that's kind of that time. But what he's talking about here in the beginning was the word. It, it, it makes God, um, it, it shows that God had an eye to eye. He was even, he was equal to his father. See, in ancient times, it was important that if you were equal in stature, if two kings come together, you sat at the same level. Does everybody understand that? They, want, they wanted to be able to look in each other's eye because one wasn't above the other. They were equal. And so it's showing us that God was equal and Jesus is equal. Now, here's where it gets tricky. We start talking about the Trinity, right? We've talked about the Trinity before, and the Trinity is, is very unique. 
There are a lot of so-called religions out there that do not believe in the triune God or the Godhead. They believe that Jesus was a God, lowercase g, that was just a man sent down as a sacrifice. And they believe all that stuff, but they don't believe that he was God. They don't believe that he is God. See, the Trinity is three distinct persons, but one God. Here's how I remembered it, and it was so easy as a kid, and it was, uh, uh, I forgot, uh, some evangelist, I'm sure, some pastor, but he talked about a football, right? We're getting ready to have the Super Bowl, a football. What's inside the football? Air, right? What's on the outside of that air? It's like a rubbery uh, uh, shell, a rubbery casing. And then what is on the outside of that rubbery casing? Is pigskin, right? It's football, leather. I don't know, whatever you make them of. Pigskin is not leather, but, you know, pigskin is what they call it, right? But anyway, without any of those ones, would that be a football? No air, it's deflated. Without that rubber in the middle, it's not going to have its, its context, the, the way it forms, what it is. And then without that skin on the outside, it wouldn't be grippable. You wouldn't be able to throw it. So it requires all three to be the one thing. See, that's how God is. See, in the beginning was God and Jesus was right there with him. Matter of fact, it even says that it is through Jesus Christ that all was created. That all was created. See, um, the the football analogy got that. Um, We see here that Jesus is God, but what about the Holy Spirit? Now, here's where you're going to ask, what about the Holy Spirit? Well, in Genesis uh, 1, 2, it says, And the, uh, the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, this same Spirit, this same Spirit is also referenced as a dove in the book of Matthew. So you had God, you had the Word, and then you had the Spirit hovering over the face of the deep. Now, I'm not going to focus on the Holy Spirit too much, but I wanted to make sure everybody understands that the triune God has been and always will be. They were not created. It is what we, they are. It is what it is. So, it is important to also note that the Trinity um, has always existed, which I already said, and I'm going to get on this, because the Trinity is a very, it's, it, it's not tricky. It's, it's fairly simple. Uh, we were talking about it in Sunday school this morning. If you think about it, each person has a role, right? Each being has a role. It's not three different beings. It's three individuals, one being. So you have God the Father, right? Sent his son. We are talking about it. Uh, the one thing that really caught our eye this morning in... Uh, Sydney brought up that I, we had never thought about, and I had honestly never thought about it, and it was in John chapter 17, but it talks about Jesus bringing eternal life to all who God gives him. Well, with, without God, nothing else would exist. That's not that hard to understand, is it? What's the same thing with the Trinity? Without God, there would be no Trinity, because what is God? God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit. It's, it's really that simple, but we first see that Jesus is God. In matter of fact, they call him further in John, he's called the incarnate word, which means he became flesh. Now, what did God say? When, 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 we're, when the world was created, when, when the heavens and the earth were created, as Genesis 1 talks about, what did, what did God do? Did he think it? He could have. He could have said, and in my head I thought, let there be light and there was light. But what did he do? God said... And it says that over and over and over again. So if God said it, it happened through Jesus Christ, the Word. As if when Jesus Jesus Christ came onto this earth to save all of mankind, the Word became incarnate. The Word incarnate, the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh flesh. So the first thing that we see is that Jesus is God. Jesus has been there since the beginning and before the beginning of creation. Jesus himself, God himself was not created. God is. He's the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. Period, dot. 
There's no way to look at it any other way. And so part of that, and I'm going to thank Sydney for this, but something I wasn't going to talk about, but it's the relationship part of Jesus and God. Because in John, as Sydney was teaching this morning, she does an amazing job. If you guys aren't in a Sunday school class, I want to encourage you to come to her class and hear her. Hear her. But it says in John 17, it talks about, I'm not going to go to the specific verse, but it talks about that Jesus wants to have the same relationship with us that God has with him. Can you imagine that relationship that we're, we're reading about it right here? As a matter of fact, in John, it also says that, you know, you will never see the Father, but if you know me and you have seen me, then you have seen the Father. So that means for us to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we have to know who he is. We have to know his relationship with his Father. That's a whole lot of stuff, right? I told you this morning, there's a whole lot of sermons that could be brought out of each and every one of these points. I understand that. And I may confuse some of you because that's just what I do. But understand that the first point is Jesus is God. He's not some extra lowercase God. He is part of the triune God. He is part of the triune God. He has been there since the beginning of time. We also see as we continue reading that Jesus is life. Jesus is life. John Wesley said, I want the whole Christ for my Savior, the whole Bible for my book, the whole church for my fellowship, and the whole world for my mission field. See, this morning I would think that we would want the whole Christ as our Savior. Because see, a lot of times when we think about life, we think about living and breathing, right? We think about what what we're going to do tomorrow. We're living life. Well, there's two things that that are discussed when you're talking about life and Jesus Christ. See, in verse 4, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. See, life existed in Christ before there was even life. Is everybody, are we understanding that this morning? Am I, am I getting that point across? There was life in Christ before there was even life, before there was even light on this earth. God knew, if you start in Genesis 1-1, which we've already kind of read a little bit of it, but that's our story started there. It started with a perfect creation. It started with a fall. It started with a rescue mission. The rest of the Old Testament is God trying to save the Israelites to finally the Savior is sent in the New Testament. And we are no longer held to the chains and the bonds of sin. We are now free. We are now redeemed, as the theologians like to call it, as the the church folk like to call it. We are redeemed. See, life has always existed in Christ. In John 1 and verse 14, it said, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of only the Son from the Father, full of grace and truth grace, and truth. See, life existed in Christ. When the word was spoken, let there be light. When the word was spoken, uh, uh, when, when, when Adam and Eve were created, when, when the animals were created and God said they were good, that was all done through his son, Jesus Christ. When God's son was dying on that cross, And he was praying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Guess who else he was praying for? Us. Us. See, it's hard for our our finite human brains to truly understand the thought process, the time and space continuum of God. Right? Now I'm getting into some of you you nerds that like like that Marvel universe where they got all these uh, parallel universes and that mixed through so you guys all understand this i do not which is why it's hard for me and maybe you guys do understand a little bit better about time as it pertains to to god but jesus is life see and not only is he the life giver not only is he the life giver but he is the life saver 
See, when, when, when we were given life, that was at birth, right? And, and I'm going to tell you right now, I believe that as soon as you are pregnant, that is a human being. That is a human being, and I will stand on that till the day I die. But that was only possible because of being created, right? And then God created us to create other little human beings. Some listen and some don't. But then there's a bigger part of that life. See, we depend on God's sustaining power. We depend on God's sustaining power. See, physically, spiritually, our life is not ours. If we are a Christ follower, even if we're not a Christ follower, the difference is we know that this life is not ours. They do not. So it's important that we get out there and we share, and that's where we're sharing the gospel. But see, life begins at birth, or it begins at conception. Life doesn't end at death for Christians. See, and then there's also a renewing somewhere in this life. You know, you're born, so that's new. Hey, look at me, I'm alive. And then you go through all the fun stuff. And then at some point, somebody tells you about Jesus and you accept what? His gift of salvation. Guess what you were just given? Eternal life. Eternal life. That is not something that you can get from anywhere but Jesus Christ. Because he's the mediator between God and man. See, we were living in darkness. We were living uh, 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 in death. The best thing we were before we got saved was worm food. I don't care how much money you made. I don't care how famous you were. I don't care how well you could sing, how well you could play an instrument. I don't care. The best thing you were was worm food. And that's still the best thing that we deserve. But because we have a a God, a Jesus, a Savior who is life, we don't have to worry about that anymore. We don't have to sit here and contemplate, I wonder what happens to my body after I die. Who cares? Because I'm going to be in heaven with my Savior. See, this life that Jesus gives is not only a physical one, but it is also a spiritual one. It is an eternal one. See, it's important that when we focus on life, we need to be focusing on the eternal. We need to be focusing on the eternal. Sydney, you're never going to have me in your Sunday school class again, but she says something this morning that just punched me right in the mouth when I heard it, and I was like, I got to share that this morning. The definition of life is interacting with your environment. That's the definition of life according to who, Sydney? Well, we're, just, we're giving somebody credit. Somebody else said it. Sydney and I didn't say it. But life is interacting with your environment. Eternal life is us interacting in God's environment. That's huge. That's huge. That's the life that we should be living. We should be living for eternity here. Do you understand what I'm saying? We should be living for eternity here. If we're giving in to the sins, if we're giving in to the world, and we're like, well, when I die, I'll go to heaven, and that's when I'll be able to rejoice and praise God and do all that. Friend, there's still a judgment. And I'm not going to go into that because that's a whole other sermon too. But Jesus is life, and the life that he gives should want us to live eternal life down here. That means we're planning for what's going to happen after we're in the ground or after we're raptured up. Some of us will be here for the rapture. And I know that's coming sooner rather than later. But Jesus is life. And then we also see in verse 4 where it says, And the life was the light of men. See, it is this light that we depend upon for physical, spiritual and our existence. In John 1, 5, it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness, the darkness here can mean so many different things. The darkness here can mean so many different things. And some of you, that probably the King James Version has comprehend. See, it was this light that Satan tried to overturn. It was this light that Satan wanted to, de- to defeat 
Because Satan thought he could be that light. See, the word comprehend can mean to take hold of, to overpower, to um, understand. Darkness. Darkness. I want you to understand this. The light that Jesus has, there is no darkness that can overcome it. There is no darkness that can overpower it. There is, there is no darkness that can understand it. The light that Jesus has is for all mankind. It's enough to light the world. See, this light shines on sin. When we become saved, when we come to, to know Jesus, we start realizing quickly, right? Oh, that's a sin. That's a sin. I shouldn't have been doing that. I mean, maybe, I, maybe I'm the only one. But when you were living a life uh, apart from God, you really didn't think about stuff. It was just living life. I want to enjoy what I want to enjoy. The world tells you if it feels good, do it. So that's what I was doing, right? But then when you get to know Jesus, he shines a light on the sins. And you're like, you start feeling all icky and convicted, right? I was going to try to stay away from the church word. But that's what happens. You start feeling convicted because the light has been shown on your sin. You're no longer in the dark. You have now been brought to the light, the light that is Jesus Christ. But even better yet than it shining the light on our sin, which we absolutely need, so we can ask for forgiveness. But it illuminates who God is. It illuminates who God is. See, without this light, we would have zero chance of being in heaven. Without this light, we would have zero chance of knowing who God is, who our Father in heaven, who loves us enough to send His Son to die on the cross. It illuminates who God is. See, when I was in the Air Force, I went to Arctic Survival School. And I, I, I'm going to tell you, I got lucky. I didn't go when it was like negative 30, negative 40. I think we were in the 10s and 20s. So it was actually pretty hot. And, and, you know, my least favorite is you had to build a lean-to. So you had to get all these leaves off these trees, and the, or uh, branches off these trees, and then you put it up like this on each other, and then you pack snow down on it. Believe it or not, you pack snow down on it. Then when you get in there, it's you and another person. So let's just say you get intimate real quick with the other person because that's how you stay warm, and that's how you survive in the cold. You're learning how to survive in case you're stranded. You know, a plane goes down, that sort of thing, right? Not very fun. But... What they taught us was the first thing you do if you are stranded is what? Build a fire. Why? Because it gives you warmth. Because it keeps the bad things away like maybe a wolf or a bear. If, if there's no fire, they may start smelling something. They're going to come in there. If there's a fire, they're going to be a little bit more leery. But that light keeps the bad things away. And yes, it brings you warmth, which is of the utmost importance, because I'd almost much rather be eaten by a bear or a wolf than I would to die freezing. I just want to put that out there, because it, it gets really cold. But light is the first thing that they teach you. A fire is the first thing they teach you that you must build if you are stranded, if you are stuck, if you are in a plane crash and you survive. Build a fire. Without a fire, you will not make it. See, without... Jesus, without the light of Jesus, we will not make it. We are stranded on this earth. Right? God, I mean, I won't say we're in a plane crash on this earth, but we're stranded on this earth. We're pilgrims. We're just going through. And without that warmth, without that light, we would be lost. We wouldn't have any clue of where we were going or what we were supposed to be doing. It's because of that light that we are who we are. And it's not because of us. It's all because of him. In Isaiah 9, 2, it says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. See, light is a symbol of hope. Light is a symbol of hope. Of course, you know, I, I thought about it when I, when I wrote that down. I was like, yeah, unless you're a cockroach, right? I mean, and I have had to go into people's houses um, that are disgusting, and you walk into the kitchen, and you turn on a light, and all of a sudden, what's scurrying everywhere? Cockroaches, right? 
So think about that. To a Christ follower, light is hope. But to a lost person, light is nothing more than an annoyance. Because they don't want to feel that warmth. They don't want for God, they don't want to know what sin they're living in. They want to stay ignorant. But to a Christ follower, that light is hope. Any light is hope. I don't know about y'all, but I, I, I like scary things. Y'all know that. And we, we go through uh, uh, scary corn mazes. I don't know if any of you have done that before. But it's pretty dark. And they make sure it's pretty dark. To the, fact, to the point where somebody can get right up in your ear and make a pig noise before they start a chainsaw. And then you hear me screaming like I'm a prepubescent teenage girl. So when you get to the end, there's a floodlight. There's floodlights, excuse me. At the end, they, they got like stadium lights to show that this is the end. And when I tell you that I had never been more happy to see light than after going through that thing, there was no greater joy have I ever had apart from being married and having kids, right? That's right, and being saved. I want to make sure I get all the right answers in there. But light is hope. And that is Jesus. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is the hope of the world, as Charlie prayed about this morning and prayed for this morning. As he prayed for our country, as he prayed for our leaders. There's only one person, there's only one thing that can fix the mess that we are in. And maybe the mess that you are in is in your personal life. Maybe the mess that you're in is in, in somebody else's life. Sometimes we get drug into stuff, right? But it doesn't matter. There's only one person that can fix any of it. And that is Jesus Christ. That is Jesus Christ. See, Jesus is God. Jesus is life. And Jesus is light. See, and I want us to understand that Jesus is God, and we see the God in the Old Testament. That's still the same God. Everybody understands that, right? But then you have Jesus, his son, who is God. And what does Jesus do? He washes the feet of the man that's going to betray him. He's in pain on the cross, in agony, and praying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. See, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Jesus is love. Jesus is about relationship. And now, sometimes, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stand up here and Joel Osteen and tell you, you know, God wants a million dollars for you and all you got to do is give a thousand offering plate and you'll get that Lamborghini or that big Ford truck you want. I'm not going to tell you that. But what I'm going to tell you is, Jesus is God in that relationship that he had with his Father. That in, through obedience, see that's the key point. He obeyed the Father. And through his obedience, did he go through some rough times on his 33 perfect years on this earth? The man didn't eat for 40 days and 40 nights and still had the wherewithal to look at Satan and say, get behind me. Jesus, the Son, resides in you through the Holy Spirit. Think about that. The light, the life, the God. You have all that he had inside of you through the Holy Spirit. But yet what, what we do is we sit back and we say, well, oh, well, this, this ain't going so hot, so I guess we need to start uh, stockpiling whatever. Oh, this ain't going so hot, so maybe we just ought to you know, throw up our hands and you know, we'll, we'll go a different direction. That's not what Christians are supposed to do. Christians are supposed to face things head on. Christians are not supposed to sit back and wait for things to happen to them before it becomes an issue. We wouldn't find ourselves in some of the situations we're in now if the church would be more proactive and more Christ-like in their relationships with this world. Let that one sink in more Christ-like in their relationships with this world. Because, you know, we're not called to be a, a, a part. We're called to be set apart. And I said a part, like a way. We still live in this world. 
There's still people in this world that need Jesus, the God, Jesus, the light, Jesus, the life. The only way they get to hear about him is through the church. It's all about our relationship with Jesus. And Jesus wants it to mirror his relationship with his father so bad. So much so that he talks about it over and over, especially in the Gospel of John. He talks about who he is and where he falls. And I will tell you, it's never below God. It's never below God. So this morning, do you know who the real Jesus is? Did I just confuse you? And if I did, you by all means could come and talk to me afterwards. I pray that you got whatever God wanted you to get out of this message. That's what I pray every Sunday. Because I know I'm not some fancy orator. I'm no Billy Graham as much as I like to act like I am. Much I'd like to be sometimes. You know, you, everybody's got that person they want to be like, right? But if you don't know who the Jesus is of the Bible, the Jesus that has been there since the beginning of time, that is God, that is life, that is light, I encourage you to come this morning and let's talk about it or grab the hand of somebody you know that you respect in the, in the, in the uh, sanctuary today and we'll talk through it with them. Maybe you've forgotten who Jesus was or who Jesus is. Maybe you've forgotten that. Maybe you've forgotten what it meant when he became your Lord and Savior. It's simple. All you got to do is pray. All you got to do is talk to him. He wants to be your life. He wants to be your light. He wants to be your everything. Are you ready to give him everything? So as the musicians come, the altar is open. You can pray right where you're at. This morning we had a request, so we're going to stand and sing 434. I have decided to follow Jesus, 434. Please stand and sing or pray, stand and pray, but stand and we're going to uh, just worship God over these next few minutes. Thank you.